Take your Bibles and turn with me to Genesis chapter 32. Tonight we're looking at Jacob, and on Sunday nights we're talking about great prayer warriors of the Bible, and we're looking tonight at a man that God had to break before he could bless. And I want to talk to you about Jacob. Jacob, very interesting person. You know, I've never really liked horses. I read in Revelation 19 that when we come back with Jesus, we're all going to be riding on white horses. I don't really like that scripture too much. I don't like horses. No offense. I'm not mad. I just had a really bad experience when I was uh, a kid. We were down over at my uncle's house, or my dad's uncle, and uh, Uncle Bob is what we called him. And uh, he had this uh, horse, and I got on it. I was about eight years old, and I was out there. First time I'd ever really ridden a horse to say to count much anything. And so I was walk, uh, walking out there, and they let go, and I had the reins, and everything was going great until the horse looked back at the barn. And boy, he broke for the barn, and I had the ride of my life. The, the reins fell out of my hands, and I was grabbed onto the mane, and he stopped right before he got to the barn, and I kept going. <laughs> and I landed upside down on the side of that barn. And when I woke up, my mother was saying, baby, baby. <laughs> I was thinking, well, if the horse didn't kill me, my mom's about to. All right, she's smothering me to death. But uh, since then, I've never really had an aspiration to be on a horse. Now, what that horse needed, besides being shot, what that horse needed <laughs> was to be broken. I want to say this to you, all jokes aside, after God saves you, He is going to break you. And just go ahead and let him. And what do I mean by that? I mean that what happened to Jacob is going to have to happen to everybody. God cannot use somebody that is filled with himself. God has to break you so he can bridle you so he can bless you. Jacob was a man that was full of himself. Jacob, his name meant surplanter, conniver, con, trickster. And every time you turned around, he was pulling something over on somebody. The Bible says that he was a mama's boy. He liked to stay inside and cook. He had a brother named Esau who was an outdoorsman, loved to hunt. We have two cats, and uh, one of them never wanted to go outside, just slept all the time. I called him Jacob. The other one was out all the time. I called her, even though she was her, I called her Esau. And guess what? Jacob fell over with a heart attack about two weeks ago. Don't say, oh, it's all right. That is, that's no big deal. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you think it's a big deal, <laughs> just a cat. <laughs> Let me press on before I get in trouble. But Jacob was home cooking one day, and his brother came in famished. At least he said he was from hunger, been out hunting. He wanted something to eat, and he said, I'll give it to you if you'll sell me your birthright. Esau said, what is my birthright to me? I don't care. He was the first, Esau was the firstborn. He was going to get a double portion of his father's blessings at, at uh, Isaac's death. And uh, he said, I don't care about my blessing. I'm famished, my birthright. I, give me some of that stew. He said, promise me that you'll give that to me. And so he traded an enormous amount of wealth for a little bowl of soup. How many of you know people that have traded something very valuable 
for something that's not very valuable. Anybody know that? I'm not talking about finances. I'm talking about some decision they've made in their life. They, they gave away really something precious that really couldn't be gotten back. And later on in time, when Esau was about to be blessed as the firstborn, Isaac had it ready to go. You know the story, probably you do, that uh, Jacob, under the leadership of his conniving mother, dressed up in Esau's clothes. And while Esau was out hunting, he went in. His dad was pretty much blind, couldn't see. And he had some skin, lamb skin hair on there because Esau was a hairy man. And anyway, at a long story short, he stole not only his birthright, but he stole his blessing. And the Bible says that Esau was ready to kill Jacob. So Jacob's mother said, you need to get out of town. You need to go to my father's house, that is Laban, your uncle. And how many of you know that God knows how to discipline us? Does anybody know that? God had a bigger conniver than Jacob, and his name was Laban. And every time you turn around, Laban was pulling a trick on the trickster. He was always conning the con. And for 20 years, he made life miserable for Jacob. And finally, after Jacob had married his two daughters, Leah and Rachel, even that was a con. He, he was going after Rachel, and somehow he snuck Leah in the tent. I've never really understood that text very much. But long story short, for 20 years, he worked for those two girls and for some livestock. And when he finally got everything that he felt like he needed and has become pretty wealthy, Jacob left. Stealthily, he left and was gone three days before Laban even knew that he was gone. And he was going back home. But he had a problem. Now he was between two angry men. His father-in-law, Laban, was mad at him for leaving. And Esau was probably still mad at him for stealing his blessing and his birthright. And so he was between a rock and a hard place. How many of you know that when you're between a rock and a hard place, that's when you meet God? Amen? He came to a place called Peniel. And the Bible says that he, in his own conniving way, sent his wife on toward Esau. But before he did, he sent some messengers out there to find out how Esau was. And that's when God started really working on him. Let me read you the story that we're going to be in tonight, and then I'll press on. Verse 24, then Jacob, the Bible says, was left alone at the Jabbok River, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When he saw that he had not prevailed against him, he touched the socket of Jacob's thigh. So the socket of Jacob's thigh was dislocated while he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the dawn is breaking. But he said, Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. He said, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him and said, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob named the place Peniel, for he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been preserved. Now the sun rose upon him just as he crossed over Penuel, and he was limping on his thigh. Therefore, to this day, the sons of Israel do not each eat the sinew of the hip, 
which is on the socket of the thigh, because he touched the socket of Jacob's thigh in the sinew of the hip. Let's talk just a little bit about what's going on here. Number one, when you pray, God breaks you. And that's a good thing. When you pray, God breaks you. He breaks you from your sinfulness. He breaks you from your wildness, if you will. Look at verse 24. Jacob was left alone. A man wrestled with him until daybreak. When he saw that he had not prevailed against him, he touched the socket of Jacob's thigh. So the socket of Jacob's thigh was dislocated while he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Jacob was in big trouble. He hadn't seen his brother Esau in 20 years. When he'd left 20 years earlier, he had lied to his father. He had stolen his brother's blessing. He had fled town to go to Uncle Laban's home, worked for 20 years as a slave. Now he's on his way back. He finds out that his brother was still angry with him. If you go back up in verse 6, you read, the messengers returned to Jacob saying, we came to your brother Esau and furthermore he's coming to meet you, but he's not coming alone. He's got 400 men who are with him. Then Jacob did what he normally did in these kind of situations. He tried to fix things manipulatively Verse 7 says, when Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, he divided the people who were with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two companies. For he said, if Esau comes to the one company and attacks it, then the company which is left will escape. And then Jacob did what he really needed to do. He started praying. You know, when you're afraid, sometimes you'll pray. God hears your prayers. Look at verse 9. Jacob said, O God, of my father, Abraham, God of my father, Isaac, O Lord, who said to me, he starts claiming the promises of God, return to your country and to your relatives and I will prosper you. O God, I'm unworthy of all the loving kindness and all the faithfulness which you have shown your servant. For with my staff only I crossed this Jordan talking about 20 years earlier, and now I've become two companies. God, you've made me wealthy. Verse 11, deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him that he will come and attack me and and the mothers with the children. For you said, again he reminds God of the promise, I will surely prosper you and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which is too great to be numbered. This passionate, fervent prayer, that's what's going to get him somewhere cried out to God, praying the promises of God, back to the God who made the promise. And it wasn't very long that God answered his prayer by sending the angel of the Lord. Now, the angel of the Lord is seen all over the New Testament. I personally believe he is the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ because he's more than just an angel. Not all angels in the Old Testament are referred to as the angel of the Lord. But whenever the angel of the Lord shows up, people start bowing down. I mean, the angel of the Lord was the one that was in the burning bush and said to Moses, take your sandals off your feet for the place on which you're standing is holy ground. Angels never said that, but the angel of the Lord did. Said the same thing to Joshua. When Joshua found him right before they went into the promised land, right before they went against Jericho, he found the angel, Joshua did, angel of the Lord, and his sword was drawn. And Joshua said, are you with us or are you with them? And he said, no. (laughs) How many of you know that God doesn't take sides, amen? He just takes over. The angel of the Lord is who Jacob is encountering. Now, I believe it's Jesus in his pre-incarnate state. Verse 24, then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. This man wrestling with Jacob was God in physical form. The angel could have taken Jacob down at any moment. Nevertheless, he toyed with him. He wrestled with him. Aren't you glad that even though God could take us out anytime he wanted to, he puts up with us, amen? 
When he saw, that is, the angel of the Lord saw that he had not prevailed against him, that is, that Jacob was not giving up, he touched the socket of his thigh, so the socket of Jacob's thigh was dislocated while he wrestled with him. I want you to catch that. He didn't hit his thigh, he just kind of tapped him. You don't want God hitting you because even a tap can dislocate a bone. God can just barely touch you. You know, we love that song, He touched me, oh, He touched me. Well, He touched Jacob too. And sometimes He'll touch you. And He might even use a sickness or a broken hip. Even though Jacob was permanently wounded, I love this, he refused to let go of God. He'd been wounded, and he'd stay wounded the rest of his life. The Bible goes on to say in verse 26, then he said, let me go for the dawn is breaking. But he said, I will not let you go until or unless you bless me. Jacob was ready to wrestle with God until he got his answer. Have you ever prayed like that? Have you ever latched on to God like that? Have you ever come in and said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me? Oh, brother Steve, I would never pray like that. Then you're never going to get an answer like he got. Some of you need to latch on to God. You're just kind of throwing up puffs of smoke, hoping something sticks up there. Let me tell you something. God wants to answer, but he's only going to answer if you pray like this man did. I will not let you go. Jacob would not leave or let go of God until the Lord blessed him. Jacob was acting like a spiritual bulldog. He had latched on to God, and the Lord loved every minute of it. God loves it when we pray like that. It was here at Peniel that God broke the stubborn sinfulness of Jacob. It was here that God got Jacob back on track. It was here that God had to wound him physically, but it would change him spiritually. And he limped for the rest of his life. We know that because when we read the, call, the, the roll call of faith in Hebrews 11, it says in verse 21 in Hebrews 11, by faith Jacob, as he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning on the top of his what? Staff. He was still limping decades later. From the time Jacob wrestled with God at Peniel to the time of his death, he walked with a limp. And every time he limped, that conniver, former conniver said, I don't trust in me anymore. I trust in God. I want to say this to you. Some of you have a Jacob's limp. Some of you are going to get one if you don't surrender to the Lord. God had to break him. Now, some of the godliest people I've ever known have gotten sick and died. But I'm convinced that God does this with his disobedient people. He touches us physically sometimes to get our attention. You know, God gave the Apostle Paul a physical illness that made him physically weak, but it also made him spiritually strong. We read about it in 2 Corinthians 12, verses 7 and following. Paul said, because of all the surpassing greatness of the revelations that God had given him, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given to me a gift came from God, a thorn in the flesh, a messenger, an angelos of Satan, to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, I implored, it's the word I begged, I beseeched God, the Lord, three times that it might leave me. And he has said to me, 
My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, insults, distresses, persecutions, difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. God used that thorn in the flesh to keep Paul dependent, to break him, to keep him trusting in the Lord. Paul prayed three times, God, remove this thorn. No. God, remove this thorn. No. God, remove this thorn. No. No, Paul. Because that thorn, with that thorn, you're better with that thorn than you would be without that thorn because you pray more now, Paul, than you ever have. You trust me more. You come after me more. You want me more because you have that limp. You have that Jacob's limp. You have that thorn in your flesh. And that is the very thing that I'm using to make you more like Jesus. I want to say this to you. I've said it before. I'm saying it to myself. Sometimes the thing that we don't like the most is the very thing that God is using to make us more like Jesus. That thorn that God has given you in the big sphere of things is a blessing. When you pray, God breaks you. Secondly, when you pray, God bridles you. It's one thing to break a horse. It's another thing to bridle a horse and to ride it. Look at verse 27. So he said to him, that is, the angel of the Lord said to Jacob, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. When the angel of the Lord asked Jacob, what is your name? It was the Lord's way of asking Jacob to surrender. Tell me your name. When you were in battle in that day and you demanded your opponent to confess his name, it meant that you were making him surrender. That's what the angel was doing with Jacob. He was asking Jacob to surrender by telling him his name. It's like two boys wrestling, and one of them puts a headlock on the other, and he's squeezing his head so hard, it's as red as a beet, and he says, say uncle, say uncle, no, no, say uncle, say uncle, no, no, say uncle, and finally, uncle, I give up. Jacob had had enough. He was more than ready to surrender he was really saying, when he said his name, he wasn't just saying Jacob, he was saying, Uncle, I give up. Or if you're in Texas, calf rope. So Jacob subserviently confessed his name. Verse 27, he said, Jacob. And when he confessed his name, the fight was over. That is the pinnacle of Jacob's life. When he said, My name is Jacob, I'm a surplanter, I'm a liar. I'm a conniver. I am a huckster. And I give up. I can't defend myself against Esau. I can't make my way anymore. I have tried and I have tried and I have tried. And I am sick of fighting you, Lord. My name's Jacob. You know who I am. Good things happen when you confess who you are to the Lord. Good things happen. He surrendered his will to God's will. And God's peace started flooding into Jacob's soul. I want to ask you, has God ever broken you? Has God ever bridled you? Can God take you wherever He wants you to go? I thought about Shelton and Brandy this morning. This guy was running a big store over here at the mall. Had a good job. Had a beautiful home. I've been into his home. I've eaten supper there. Nice big yard, nice house. The store, when he took it, was going down. And man, when he took it, it was going up. 
very successful in the world's eyes. And yet God said, sell it all and move to South America. You don't do that kind of thing unless you've been broken and bridled. When you pray, God breaks you. Have you let God break you? Are you surrendered? When you pray, God bridles you. And there's one more thing. Here's the good part. Save the, save the best for last. Here's dessert. Here it comes. When you pray, God blesses you. Look at verse 28. He said, your name shall no longer be Jacob. Here's what he's saying in the Hebrew. Your name shall no longer be deceiver, cheater, swindler, liar. But I'm going to give you the name of Israel. One who strives with God and overcomes. Wow. What a change. And to this day, we call it the nation not of Jacob, but the nation of Israel. To this day, we still know that Israel has a special place in the heart of God because this man was broken at the Jabbok River at Peniel. You have striven with God and with men, and you've prevailed. And Jacob pushed in a little bit more. He said, hey, this is so good. I'd like to know your name. Jacob asked him and said, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? You can tell the Lord was in charge of this whole thing. But I love this last part. And he blessed him there. He got a brand new name. He went from a con and a deceiver to one who had victory with the Lord. And after the fight, The Bible says in verse 30, so Jacob named the place Peniel where he said, I have seen God face to face. That's why I know this wasn't just an angel. This was the angel of the Lord. This was the pre-incarnate Jesus. This is God in the flesh. I've seen the angel of the Lord face to face. I've seen God face to face, yet my life has been preserved. And then he starts walking apparently to his family and I love verse 31. Now the sun rose upon him just as he crossed over Penuel and he was limping on his thigh. Therefore to this day the sons of Israel don't eat the sinew of the hip which is on the socket of the thigh because he touched the socket of Jacob's thigh in the sinew of his hip. He's walking back Can't you see Jacob walking up to his family? He's had no sleep in 24 hours. He's wrestled with the angel of God all night long. The Bible says that they didn't come to the conclusion until the day was breaking. I just imagine when you wrestle with God all night long, I think your hair is going to be messed up, don't you? I think if you wrestle with God all night long, I think your clothes are going to be torn, don't you? I think when you wrestle with God all night long, your eyes are going to be bloodshed. And when God touches you on the hip, I think he was limping in. But I want to tell you something. God had done something in his heart. He had lifted that guilt you can't do somebody wrong like he did to Esau and it not eat at you all the time. All that was gone. And he'd take that limp any day of the week just to have forgiveness from God. He had peace with God. Do you believe that's better than having good health? Wouldn't it be better to have a limp the rest of your life and be right with God than to have good health 
and be a deceiver. He's walking in. Rachel said, what in the world has happened to you? He didn't say anything. Leah said, what in the world has happened to you? He didn't say anything. His kids came up and said, Daddy, what in the world has happened to you? He set them all down. He said, I've seen God. And I may be limping, but I got blessed last night. I got blessed this morning. God broke me. God bridled me. I surrendered. And then God blessed me. I've got a new name, guys. I'm no longer a conniver. I'm no longer a liar. I've wrestled with God. And He won. But I won too. He forgave me. And now I have wrestled with God and I have overcome. I'm a new man. I am not Jacob anymore. I'm Israel. Is it me or is it just quiet in this room? You know, some of you have wrestled with God a long time. I got two words for you. Give up. Let him have his way. Just let him have his way. How many of you believe that God still knows how to touch us if we need it? Anybody believe that? Sure does. But all that touch will be so precious. Because if you didn't have that, you wouldn't talk to him as much. You wouldn't love him as much. You wouldn't depend on him as much. God's using that very thing that somebody might even look at your life and say, that's a hindrance. But you say, oh no, oh no. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm so glad I've got a Jacob's limp. That's what I almost named this sermon, the blessing of a Jacob's limp. I'd rather walk with a Jacob's limp the rest of my life and walk with God than to walk normally and not know God. Hadn't you? Amen. Thank the Lord, Jacob, that you prayed at Peniel. Thank you, Lord, that we can pray even in the crisis moments of our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you won't leave us alone until you break us like a stallion. You break us from our selfishness. You break us from our sinfulness. You break us from our selfishness. And you, then you bridle us so that you can use us. And then you just pour out blessings on us. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you for giving us a new name. Thank you for giving us a new nature. Thank you for giving us forgiveness of sin. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for Jacob. Thank you so much for the privilege of this precious man. Thank you that he went on to be a great man of God. I pray that you would do this process in somebody's life here tonight. Break them, bridle them, and bless them. Do it, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus' name, and if that's your prayer, say amen.